how would you describe your order of operations if you end up with your guard pass and, and bottom side control? What, what's typically the first thing you like to do? What's the first thing you like to keep in mind? And then what's the what's the order of operations from there typically? I mean, the first thing is to understand like where their attacks are coming from, right? And where their control is coming from even before, because before they, you know, uh, if, if they're, if they force themselves into a pass position, if it's not something that we're, where we acquiesce and, and are, are letting them, uh, kind of have the, the position is like, you're, you're starting to think like, oh, I'm spending too much energy here. They're, they're getting too far at some point. I'm going to, I'm overextending my limbs to where that is not just going to be a, a positional, uh, advancement that they make, but rather that maybe they can, they can, you know, pass and have an arm or pass and have a neck, or I can, I can get my leg too far away from my body and my opponent can, can get onto my legs. Um, so the moment that they're entering side control, there's, there's a danger, but usually they're not going to be able to control you unless they hold your head. Right? They need to control your head and shoulders. They need to advance up, you know, up our body to, to, to hold us flat, to put their chest on our chest. Um, and so once, once that's happened, whether we allowed that to happen because we didn't want to waste energy or we were afraid of, you know, a, you know, some, some danger along the way, but we're trying to prevent them from, you know, getting our head. So they can't, maybe they get points in a, in a side control position, but there's no, uh, there's no submission threat. Right. Uh, and then we're trying to monitor that hand, their, their hand closest to our head, typically one, so they can't hold it. So they can't pin, you know, uh, pin us down, uh, in a, in a, in a way where we're going to have to spend a lot of energy to get out. Uh, and two is cause that's where the majority of their attacks are going to come from. Their attacks are coming regardless of the position, whether they're on their, you know, your back or mount or side control, or it's a guard pass, their attacks are coming from their hands. They're initiating with their hands. So it's really, um, understanding that dynamic of, of, and the decision-making tree that comes off of how to, you know, what, what we need to do based on where their hands are and how we can channel them into positions where, you know, maybe they have, uh, you know, they have some element of control over us, but they don't have control, uh, that's gonna, um, that they're going to be able to have effective submission attacks from. Excellent. I really like that. And trying to deny their control in the first place, of course, and unlock their control, but doing it always in a safe way that expose, you know, that, that doesn't expose us to their submission threat. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, jujitsu is, jujitsu is an art of, of managing variables and, 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 uh, you know, like, I like how you said, you th you think of things as like a decision tree and it, it really is like that when you, when you, when you map things out mentally, um, you know, there's one of the variables that can exist in, in any given role or match is the abilities and specialties of your opponent. Is that something that, that I guess, um, alters in any way your, your, or your order of operations? Like if you're dealing with a guy, let's, let's use side control, for example, you're in bottom side, you know, there's a guy on top that has a very specific attack maybe he likes to go to north south or maybe he always goes right to neon belly and looks for baseball chokes or something like that does that alter in any way the order of operations that you might use uh, does it kind of force you into a, into a more holistic way of you know rolling with someone or do you pretty much have an order of operations that across the board it works on anybody no matter what they're doing i think it's relatively universal because you know everyone has two arms and two legs and, sure. and hands. And, and, uh, if, if you can understand kind of the, the universal key of, of where their attacks are coming from, you can shut that down. Of course, like when you start dealing with, um, you know, a specific opponent who's, who's a specialist in something like, you know, you're training with Marcelo and, and worry, worry, you have a lot of stuff to worry about with Marcelo, but worrying about like his North South choke or, or, or something, for example, you, you know, there's, there's some, there's, you have to draw some lines where you, you're like, I don't want to fight in those positions, uh, because he's just, he's, he's too good there. Right. Like regardless of how skillful we are with, in our defense, they're, they're likely, uh, more skillful and more well-versed in their offense. Um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it uh, is, I think it will always be, uh, you know, there's a practical application of understanding what, you, what your opponent's very good at and, and either in, and how to deny the, the, you know, what they need for, for, to be successful with that. 